Call of the Lamb, the hit new innovative roguelike. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe not. But regardless, I'm going to show you how to build the best cult, the greatest cult that this world has ever seen. So let's just get right into it. So first we get this nice snazzy cap and with it the power to start our new world order, find our first follower, and obviously we have to kidnap him without his consent. Now it's time to begin the cult. Thanks to this hat, we have the ability to genetically modify our followers, so obviously, I made him a green pig. Now sadly, he's very skeptical, so he's never going to rise to a real seat of power within the cult, but nonetheless. To make anything, we need to break stones and trees, and of course we need to forge for food. Now with the magic barrier that I didn't even know was here destroyed, it's time to feed Humner's soul to this fire so this door magically opens, as one does. After that, we read about whoever Leshy is, and then proceed to massacre a bunch of bats, and go scorched earth on their habitat. But in addition to violence, we also found a friend down here, Klonik, who says a bunch of stuff that I didn't care enough to read, but he gave us a free tarot card and sent us on our way. At least tarot cards are power up, so they're pretty nice. Now after that, we met that Leshy guy from earlier, you remember him, that guy we ignored, and he just he just threatened us and left. Pretty rude, honestly. We're not gonna we're not gonna stand for that. Not to be deterred, I earned myself a new path that I'll never use, and continued on my rampage. Last she came back, taunted me, reminded me that I only have one follower who's also skeptical, before leaving to fight the first mini boss of the game, Amduzius, or however his name's pronounced. He was pretty weak, and he instantly abandoned Leshy to join the New World Order upon his death. So, with two followers, we of course had to build a temple and a shrine, because what's a cult without those? And I preached my first sermon to my devoted followers, all two of them. Now delving back into the wilds, our friendly overseer gave us this weird magic gun ability, and then we met this guy. This is honestly very frightening, so let's just move on. Next up we met Haru, and since I always hated poetry, I ignored him and proceeded to rob his stone fragments. We defeated yet another one of Lechi's men and forced him into our cult before making this hard-hitting, important decision. What's more important, sleep or food? I'm gonna go with sleep. My guys don't need food. After that, we got our first ritual, and then we got beat up by a worm, obtained yet another tarot card, and then met them. Not only Lushy, but his two associates, hell-bent on preventing my cult from superseding theirs. Now, after that, we kidnapped Barbatos, the man who would become my most loyal subject over time, of course. And we learned how to read his mind, which is frightening. Now, since my followers can't do literally anything on their own, I spent all my wood building beds for them, but they made it up to me with their continued blind loyalty and completely overlooking all of my flaws. Now you may not know this, but fun fact, I have a crippling gambling addiction, so I couldn't help but make a bet with Ratu, which I won easily before finally getting to name my cult. Yeah, so I'm, I'm bad with names. With our fabled fight against Leshy looming ever closer, he warned us not to trust our obviously evil patron god, the one who waits. And then he sacrificed his follower to become a biblically accurate angel, who I must say, I am quite afraid of. But fitting the first true boss of the game, he was pretty easy. Besides spawning in more enemies, he really didn't do much except hiding underground and carpet bombing the entire stage. And his death allowed us to steal his heart and unlock a special power that would help us in the future if I ever bothered to use it. Now, as you can tell by my thought process, this next commandment is very important. Law and order, I don't know, they seem obedient enough. Possessions, they don't have anything anyway. Work, they're working. Yeah, let's do more sustenance, why not? Food of the predator, or food of the prey, the age-old question. Well, I hope they like grass, because that's what they're getting. Now, after beating up some bats and ignoring yet another pointless riddle, the one who waits gave us the power to murder- <coughs> sorry. To sacrifice our followers for the good of the cult. Now before moving on, we of course granted the power of light to a rival cult, before speaking to a fish. Nah, nah, that, nah, that would be preposterous, he's definitely a fisherman. So anyway, our first solo talk with Hecate, the next 
bishop we need to kill commenced. And she decided to starve my most loyal follower. Pretty rude, I'm not gonna forget, nor am I gonna forgive. Next I met a fellow businessman who gave me a phenomenal deal. 68 counted, 68% off. Why he's practically giving me this guy for free, how could I turn this deal down? And despite making an entire cult just for him, God still yelled at me for not doing enough for him. And then we met this totally normal, not dangerous at all looking wolf who said she knew Ratu. And it's at this point that I actually took the time to read his name and realized it's apparently pronounced Ratau instead of Ratu. But I don't learn from my mistakes, so I'm not going to change anything at all. Now let's commit genocide against these defenseless mushrooms before joining a board meeting with myself and my three most hated still alive enemies. After listening to this riddle from a clearly traumatized spider, I vowed to heck it out of curiosity, which my cult did not approve of, fun fact. Despite having starved my most loyal followers, the general hunger wasn't that low, so I just kind of ignored all of them like a good cult leader would. Next, we indoctrinated a faithless, slothly, and skeptical new follower for some reason. I don't really know why I let him in, but I did. Before making a hard decision, do we force our followers to support animal sacrifice? Would we give them the comfort of the afterlife? Obviously, we're gonna go with sacrifice. What else would we do? Now, just as I thought everything was going well, I learned some terrible news. Oh, it shot me to the bone. Greddy is actually a spy sent to undermine me. Of course, I confronted him immediately once I found him because I had no clue who he was, but he refused to talk. Didn't say anything. Could he really be a spy? Or is his accuser actually the one in the wrong? I think we'll get back to this a little later on. Next up, we got mauled by a frog and barely defeated the next mini-boss before I finally decided my cult had earned a little bit of food, so we fed them. Then I remembered that I had a bunch of necklaces I didn't give out, so I finally gave them away, ensuring that my followers wouldn't need to sleep again, which means more work and more prayer for them, as they should. A tough choice here. Let's go with this one. Is money the root of all evil? Or is the true evil withholding it from me? Now as a consummate businessman, this doctrine really speaks to me. So of course, I went with bribery. Now for some reason, Barbatos, my most loyal of followers, wanted me to accept heretics into my into my, my cult. Of course, I vehemently denied this, which he was not happy about, so now I need to build a prison just in case. But before that, I had to host a grand feast to really raise the faith because everyone was getting kind of mad for some reason. Which, I don't know why, it's not like I did anything wrong, like not feeding them or sacrificing them, so I don't know what they cared so much about. But I needed to raise the faith a little bit. After that, we finally obtained some new drip, got ourselves a brand new fleece. So now we have an extra power up, we get four tarot cards at the beginning of every round. Now luckily for us, Hecate didn't mind waiting while I scrolled through my new tarot cards right in front of her. She told me to head to her temple, but it remains to be seen whether he'll share the same fate that Lushy did. With his minions defeated and his lands destroyed, it's time to face the second boss, Hecate. After obliterating Lushy, I was confident that this would be an easy fight, but boy was I wrong. My worst enemies. The frogs were out in full force, making it hard to dodge Hecate's range attacks. But the worst came when Hecate left. The frog army was so much more dangerous than she ever was. And finally, they got me. My first death of the game, not at the hands of a god, of a bishop, but at the hands of the frog brigade. Not one to give up. Our god simply revived us, and we headed right back into Anora, and forced our way back to Hecate. Now all this fight really required is a little bit of patience, which is something I apparently don't have. But, we were dealing some good damage. Until the frogs returned, that is. While I fought them off, Hecate continued her relentless assault against me, tongue slapping and carpet bombing me at every opportunity. I avoided her for as long as I could, but it was just too much, and I fell to Hecate once again, dealing me my second death of the run. Deciding that I should finally prepare myself for next time, I upgraded my weapons and my cult a little bit, 
and finally made an outhouse for my uncultured followers so they would finally stop defecating on the ground and do it inside. Also, I built a prison just in case anybody decides to revolt against me. The Gritty Saga finally continues. Now apparently, he wants to eat a meal made from another follower, which is a little sus. I decided to go and sacrifice one of my followers, giving me another upgrade, and for some reason, really overdrawing the remaining cult members. But regardless of that, our weapons are even stronger. And before we go back to finally kill Hecate, I gave Gertie what he wanted, and unsurprisingly, it made him sick. What a shock. But at least he's happy, so good for him. And right before I went in, I decided to open the remaining two doors, just in case I kill too many of my followers and I don't have enough to do it later, so. With our cult royal and our weapons upgraded, all that remained was for me to finally kill Hecate and prove our superiority over her. So, we return to Anora one last time. Armed with a pair of gauntlets and a devastating new curse, we began our journey. Slicing our way through the base enemies, we had no trouble until we reached Guzian, who for some reason decided to block my path. I don't know why a mini boss was here, but he was. Not to be deterred, we slayed him easily and continued on, gaining a little bit of health on the way, or maybe a lot of health, forced our way through the most vicious of Hecate's lieutenants. His frogs, cultists, plant monsters, they all fell before me, and soon we were once again standing right before Hecate, ready for a climactic final battle. I was better armed than ever before, and I was determined to end him once and for all, right here, right now. He transformed once again and leapt right at me, dealing some early damage. But my gauntlets? Unbeatable. Within moments, he was already halfway towards defeat. I dealt some heavy damage with my curse, and before he could summon any more allies, he was dead. Just like that. This I don't know what was different this time. Maybe it was my curse, maybe it was my weapons, maybe it was the support, the loyalty of my followers. But not only did we defeat him, this was a decisive victory for the cult. Hecate, our greatest nemesis, was no more. The cult was happy to celebrate when I returned with her heart. The ever bloodthirsty monsters they are. Next time, we're gonna defeat the remaining two bishops and ensure that our cult, the Playtime Cult, becomes the greatest cult that this world has ever seen. And make sure to subscribe to the channel, for the one who waits has rolled itself.